So I have a quick disclaimer to start off this video with. If you're here because uh, you're not really comfortable with the process of, uh, you know, or taking orthogonal projections uh, or, or doing the Gram-Schmidt process, that would probably be a better thing to go review before you come here. Because essentially what we're doing in all of these problems is applying those same principles. Uh, we're, we're finding an orthogonal basis just like we do with the Gram-Schmidt process, but instead of using vectors, it's, it's a lot weirder. Uh, we're using polynomials, we're using different definitions for the inner product, it, it, except that you'll see, I'll just, I'll just show you here. Um, the, the new inner product that we use it has been exactly the same, um, you know, in, in all three of these questions. So, okay, but th that's all I'll say. If, if you're uncomfortable with Gram-Schmidt, go do Gram-Schmidt. You need to have those formulas just in your head um, because it gets really weird here really quick. Okay, 23, let V be the vector space uh, of, the, of all continuous functions from negative one to one with the inner product defined on this space as the integral from negative one to one of f of t times g of t, where uh, that inner product is for the inner product of uh, f and g. And then let's find an orthogonal basis for the subspace spanned by these three polynomials. Okay, great. So the general formula that we're using for this is the exact same as the dot product. Let's call this, sorry, not the dot product, the Gram-Schmidt process. Let's call this u1, u2, and u3. We're looking for the set v1, v2, v3. We can say that v1 is equal to uh, the, normal, the normalized u1. So 1 over the magnitude of u1 multiplied by u1. And I'll leave out the, the magnet, the, actually, no, we're not finding, we're not finding an orthonormal basis. Got to be careful. We're just finding uh, an orthogonal basis. So our v1 is actually just always going to be equal to our u1. Then v2 will be uh, u2 minus the projection of u2 onto v1. So that will be the dot, the, the inner product of u2 and v1 over the inner product of v1 with v1 multiplied by uh, the actual value of v1. Then v3 will be u3 minus the projection of u3 onto v1, so u3 inner producted with v1 over v1, 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 and then we're subtracting out the projection of u3 onto v2. So that's all of all of this all over again, but instead of uh, instead of v1s, we just have v2s. Okay, so here's our formula. I think I'll I'll shrink it and put it. I'll put it. Nope, come on. Except I don't want those u's. Okay, I'll put it up here. Uh, we're not really gonna directly look at it. Um, if, if you know enough Gram-Schmidt stuff. It should just kind of come to you at this point. So we're just re we're just remembering what's going on up there, and let's see if we can figure this out. So we said that v1 v1 would just be equal to equal to u1. So v1 is one. That was <laughs> that's that's a third of the problem done uh, in a way. V2 is going to be u2. So t plus one minus the projection minus the projection of u2 onto v1. So that will be uh, u2, u2 inner producted with v1. That's the integral from negative one to one of those two functions multiplied together. So t plus one dt. Now the thing you'll notice if we graph out any odd, uh, any, any function that, of t that has an odd exponent. So here's t cubed, here's t, uh, and t to the fifth, t to the seventh would also work. You, you kind of see that if we take an integral equally to the left of the y-axis and to the right of the y-axis, we can just completely ignore uh, that, it, that function's contribution to this overall integral. So this t will just evaluate, uh, will evaluate to zero if we integrate from negative one to one. And so that's one little shortcut that I'm gonna be taking for all of these questions. 
we're gonna uh, just get rid of the odd get rid of the odd exponent functions so this will be t from negative 1 to 1 so we get 2 there 2 over uh, now what are we doing we're, we're finding the we're finding the uh, the dot, the inner product of v1 with v1 v1 is just 1 so that's the integral of 1 that's that's just what we, we took right here. So that's another two on the bottom and we're multiplying everything by V1. So this is multiplied by one. So we're subtracting a one and that gives us T. There is our V2. Now V3 will be U3 minus the projection of, of U3 onto V1. That gives us the dot product of well, it's not really a dot product. I'm in, I'm in a very bad habit of saying that. The dot product, <laughs> the inner product of 1 with t squared over the inner product of 1 with 1. We know that this evaluates to 2. We're multiplying all this by uh, v1. And then we're also subtracting, uh, we're subtracting what? t inner producted with t squared over t inner producted with t multiplied by t. Okay, well, we can get rid of a couple of the, uh, at least one of these right off the bat because this is just going to be the integral of t cubed from negative one to one, which we know evaluates to zero. So this entire portion is just zero. And uh, what else? Now we just need the integral from negative one to one of these two functions multiplied together. So t squared times one, which is uh, t squared dt, which is t cubed over 3 from negative 1 to 1, 1 third, negative 1 third, so we get 2 thirds there. 2 thirds over 2 uh, will just be 1 third, and t squared minus 1 third will still be orthogonal to these other vectors if we change this to 3, t squared minus 1. So there we are. And, uh, oh, wait, did I? Nope, I didn't. We're good. Uh, B is our correct answer. 24, same setup, same everything. We're just doing this with uh, different numbers. So V1 is just U1. Here, U1, U2, U3. You got to label those. Uh, so V1 is U1, so that's 1. V2 is U2, so t minus 1 minus the projection of that onto v1. So we have the dot product of t minus 1 with 1 over 1 inner producted with 1 multiplied by 1. We know that this comes out to 2 and then uh, this integral right here will be the integral from negative 1 to 1 of t minus 1 dt. Since we have uh, t to the first power here we can just get rid of that. That's not going to contribute to this integral at all. And uh, this is the same thing as just uh, the negative, negative one times the integral or the, the, the value that we, we, oh God, the value that we replaced down here, which was the inner product of uh, one and one, which was exactly this integral. So we get negative one up top here. So adding these together, adding, oh, sorry, when I replaced that with one, I should have replaced that with a two the integral from negative 1 to 1 is uh, is 2. Sorry about that. Getting a little carried away. And we just get t for v2. Now v3 will be u3, t squared plus t, minus the projection of u3 onto v1. So that's t squared plus t inner producted with 1 over 1 inner producted with 1, which we can already go and replace with a 2, multiplied by uh, v1, and then we're also subtracting out t squared plus t inner producted with t all over all over what? Uh, t inner producted with t multiplied by t. Okay, looks good. Let's uh, let's figure some of these out. This integral right here will be the integral from negative one to one of t squared plus t dt. 
since we have an odd exponent on that t, we can get rid of it, and we know that the integral from negative 1 to 1 of t squared evaluates to 2 thirds. So I'll just put that in there. Now what about, what about, uh, what about everything over here? Well, this will just be the integral of t squared from negative 1 to 1, which we know uh, evaluates to 2 thirds, and then this top integral will be the integral from negative 1 to 1 of t cubed plus t squared dt, and the integral of t cubed will, uh, will give us 0, so we can just get rid of that, and this is the same integral that we just took three times in a row. This gives us 2 thirds. So here we get uh, minus t, what about, what about here? We get minus 1 third. So that gives us t squared, t squared minus 1 third. So e is our answer. 19, same thing, except, except we are not finding uh, an orthogonal basis for a subspace spanned by some vectors. Uh, we're given, we're given two orthogonal two orthogonal polynomials for a subspace, and we're told to find the orthogonal projection of this thing onto the subspace spanned by those two. Now what we've been doing up here is uh, if we call our polynomial p, we've been finding p minus p hat for all of these examples. So v1 is uh, p1 minus p hat 1, that kind of thing. But what, we'll, what we're doing here is just computing p hat, where that will be uh, if we call this v1 and v2, and this guy just p, we're computing p interproducted with v1 over v1 interproducted with v1 multiplied by v1 plus, not a minus, because remember we were, we were subtracting out the whole of p hat from all those other examples, so we're, uh, we're adding up this projection this time. This will be p interproducted with v2 over v2 interproducted with v2 times v2. So let's uh, let's figure these things out and as always we can get rid of any odd uh, polynomials uh, you know because uh, their integrals will just go to zero. Okay so p interproducted with v1 this first one up top here will be the integral from negative 1 to 1 of 10 t cubed minus 5 multiplied by 1. So that's just that's just that. This 10 t cubed will go to 0. This negative 5, this negative 5 will be negative 5 t on, whoops, on negative 1 to 1 minus 5, 5. So we get negative 10 up there. Now for this bottom one, we will just have the integral, the integral of 1 dt, which will turn into 2. So overall, this is negative 5. Okay, great. Uh, what about this second component here that we're computing? We're computing p interproducted with v2. That will give us 10 t cubed minus 5, all multiplied by all multiplied by t, and that's our v2. Uh, that this will give us, let's see, dt, uh, 10, 10 t to the fourth minus 5 t. This minus 5 t has an exponent of 1, which is odd, so we'll get rid of it. We get 2 t to the fifth on negative 1 to 1. This gives us 2, negative 2, so 4 up here. And we know that the uh, integral of, of uh, t squared on negative 1 to 1, which is what this denominator will evaluate to, is just 2 thirds. 4 over 2 thirds is the same as 4 times 3 over 2, so that's 6. We'll replace this v2 with a t, and we get 6t uh, minus 5. This v1 is just a 1, and we're done. When I took this exam, I screwed it up by, uh, instead of finding the orthogonal projection, I found, which, which is just p hat, I found p minus p hat. And of course, there's an answer choice for that uh, to, to trick you. Um, and yeah, you'll see if we take our, our 10t cubed minus 5, 
and we uh, subtract from it 6t, and then we add 5, that would be um, subtracting out our entire p hat, we get 10t cubed minus uh, 6t, which is, of course, yeah, our answer choice C. But E is correct. Uh, you got to be careful with the wording, like I was not.